Part 4. Providing Detailed Costs and Dealing with Feed-in Tariffs In the first three parts of this video, I used the Virtual Energy Analyzer to generate a quick analysis of a photovoltaic project in northwestern Mexico, and then I adjusted the parameters and compared different technology options in the Energy page. Now I'm going to turn my focus to the Cost and Financial Analysis pages to show how we can account for balance of system costs, inverter replacement costs, and feed-in tariffs. Partway through, I'm going to change the location of the project. I'll start where I left off in the Energy page. I have three project options, but I'm only interested in building one of them. I'm going to go with the high efficiency modules, and I pick that, and only that, in the Include System table. Then I'll turn to the Cost page. The Cost page is fine as is, but one thing I might want to look at is how inverter replacement affects my cash flows. While photovoltaic projects may last 25 years, inverters generally do not. It might be prudent to budget for one inverter replacement over the course of the project. This cost can be folded into the annual O&M budget. In this approach, adopted in my current analysis, the cost of inverter replacement is spread over the entire life of the project. A more realistic approach is to specify a year for inverter replacement and then indicate the full cost of inverter replacement in that year. We can do that in the cost analysis page, but not with a level 1 analysis. Selecting level 2, however, adds a new section at the bottom of the page for periodic costs. In the new periodic cost section, let's add a line item called inverter replacement. Indicate that it is for 800,000 Canadian dollars and specify that it is a cost occurring in year 13 of the project. The $800,000 inverter replacement cost may seem a bit low, but keep in mind that costs for power electronics are falling. Furthermore, this amount is the projected cost of the inverter replacement in today's dollars, and it is going to be inflated at 3% annually out to year 13. I can verify that this is the case by consulting the finance page and observing that the dip in annual cash flows from year 12 to 13 is over $1 million. Before I move on, I need to correct two problems that I've created. First, I've just added a periodic cost for inverter replacement, but inverter replacement was already included in the annual O&M cost I specified on the energy page. To avoid double counting, I'm going to subtract $1 per kilowatt per year from the O&M costs. To make it clear that I have done this, I'll add a line item called Removal of Inverter Replacement from Annual O&M in the cost page. It is a credit worth $1 for each of the 20,000 kilowatts installed. Second, as it stands, my analysis indicates that I am getting this project for free. How did that happen? Well, unlike in a level 1 analysis, where the initial costs of the photovoltaic project are automatically copied from the energy page, in a level 2 or 3 analysis, the initial costs have to be entered manually. This is the case because the level 2 and level 3 analyses allow us to break the costs into individual components, and we haven't told RetScreen how to partition the total costs among the different project components. I'm not obligated to break the costs into different components. Under the power system heading of the initial cost section, I could simply re-enter the lumped cost estimate of $1,360 that I previously provided on the energy page. But for the purposes of illustration, let's break out a few of our component costs. Photovoltaic modules are the biggest single initial cost, so let's include these separately. I'm going to enter a line item under the power system indicating that I have to purchase 20 megawatts of modules at $480 per kilowatt. I could add further line items, but if I want that level of detail, maybe I should go to level 3, which provides a lot of cells for different cost items typically found in projects. The level 3 analysis is blank, so it appears that we have to re-enter the inverter and module cost information. Fortunately, there is a button at the top to copy the cost information from level 2 to level 3, and we don't have to re-enter anything. A feature of cost analysis level 3 is the drop-down 
list for specific project costs that appears under the Balance of System and Miscellaneous section. When I pick Photovoltaic, three line items specific to photovoltaic systems appear. The first is the inverter. I've got a 16 megawatt inverter, and I'll assume that it costs 70 Canadian dollars per kilowatt. The second is my collector structure. From the energy page, I see that I have 100,000 square meters of photovoltaic panels that I need racking for. I'll enter $20 per square meter for that. And third, I'll enter $3 million for installation and labor. I could continue to break down my costs in this way, using existing line items and adding line items as necessary, but to save time, I'll just enter the remaining costs that will bring the total to the same figure as we had in the level one analysis. With the energy and cost page as I like them, I'll turn to the finance page. I'm happy to see that I have a profitable project, but keep in mind this assumes that the project is being paid 10 Canadian cents per kilowatt hour. Recent photovoltaic projects in Mexico have offered prices much lower than that. It might be interesting to see how much we could lower the price paid for PV electricity while still maintaining project profitability. Right now, the discount rate is set to 9%. This indicates that the minimum acceptable rate of return on the equity investment is 9%, or, in other words, the project investors will walk away if they don't see an internal rate of return of 9%. What is the minimum electricity price that achieves a 9% IRR in equity? We can investigate this by changing the electricity price until the IRR reaches 9%. As this is an iterative process, it is helpful to open the dashboard again and display the financial viability parameters there. Then, on the energy page, I lower the export rate until an IRR of 9% is achieved. This occurs when the tariff is 6.6 .6 Canadian cents per kilowatt hour. You'll note that, at this price, the net present value is zero, indicating a break-even project and confirming my claim that 9% is the minimum acceptable rate of return. Of course, this reflects our particular assumptions. Under different assumptions, the price required for profitability might be lower or higher. If we were negotiating a price for sales of electricity to the grid, this 6.6 .6 cents would be our lower bound. There are times, however, when the price of electricity is stipulated up front. This is the case, for example, when there is a so-called feed-in tariff or standardized long-term contract for the purchase of renewable energy. Let's imagine that the province of Alberta, Canada was to offer a feed-in tariff, paying 10 cents per kilowatt hour for solar generated electricity over a 20 year period. This is much higher than the typical market price of electricity, which is highly variable but which you might estimate at 5 cents per kilowatt hour right now. With the feed-in tariff, would this project be profitable in that much more northern climate? First, we're going to move our 20 megawatt project to Alberta. This is actually quite easy. On the location page, I drag my project thumbtack way north to southeastern Alberta, such that the climate data is taken from Medicine Hat Airport. On the facility page, I change the name. On the energy page, it seems like I should set my price back to 10 cents per kilowatt hour, the feed-in tariff. I could also change the tilt angle, but I'll leave it at 25 degrees so as to minimize land use. Note that my capacity factor is down to 17.5%, which is not as good as Mexico, but is still respectable for a project located at 50 degrees north. Now I get to the finance page. Immediately, I realize that there is a problem. My project lifetime is 25 years, but the feed-in tariff only applies for the first 20 years. After that, I'll be selling the project electricity at the market rate, currently 5 cents per kilowatt hour. One option is to simply not worry about the difference in rates that happens 20 years in the future. At a discount rate of 9%, it is not going to have a big impact on the net present value of our project. I'll want to adjust the electricity export escalation rate since the feed-in tariff does not change over time. But rather than zero, I'll set it to minus 0.7% to account for module degradation. I'll also reduce the inflation rate and debt interest rate by one percentage point to reflect Alberta conditions. The project appears profitable, but just. The internal rate of return is 9.8%, barely higher than our minimum acceptable rate of return. 
How badly will the profitability suffer when the feed-in tariff expires after 20 years? To find out, we go back to the energy page and set the electricity price to the market rate for electricity, or 5 cents per kilowatt hour. We'll guess that the market rate for electricity will follow the general rate of inflation, so I'll increase the electricity export escalation rate by 2 percentage points to 1.3%. Then, to include the feed-in tariff, I'll click on Clean Energy Production Revenue. I'll put in the 10 cent per kilowatt hour feed-in rate, indicate that it is paid over 20 years, and escalate this at minus 0.7% to account for module degradation. Now we have the situation where, over the first 20 years, Redscreen thinks that every unit of electricity is paid both the 5 cent market rate and the 10 cent feed-in tariff. I'm going to correct this with a little trick. I'm going to click on Other Revenue and for Energy, enter the annual electricity generation of 30,700,000 kilowatt hours. For the rate, I'm going to enter negative 5 cents per kilowatt hour. In this way, I'll cancel the market rate. I'm going to apply this for the first 20 years of the project and make it escalate in magnitude by 1.3%, just like the market rate. After 20 years, both this negative value and the feed-in tariff will disappear from my analysis, leaving only the market rate. The internal rate of return has gone down slightly, but it still exceeds the 9% target. We still have some hope of getting our investors on board, especially since we can assure them that we have taken into account the disappearance of the feed-in tariff after 20 years. This concludes this video on how to analyze grid-tied photovoltaic power projects with RetScreen Expert. If this was useful to you, you might want to follow the other RetScreen Expert videos you can find by clicking on the e-learning icon at the right of the home screen under the File tab.